Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. In this video today, we're going to be discussing real estate holding companies, so-called real estate holding companies. Now, to be clear, I've always been rather hesitant to discuss this topic, and I'm not going to go into great detail with respect to real estate holding companies pertaining to things like houses and actual land. Um, suffice it to say, it is possible for a company to own land in the Kingdom of Thailand, but um, it should be noted that there are heavy restrictions on this, especially where a foreigner is involved, and there, are, there have been circumstances where various law enforcement officials um, have deemed that certain structures are purely for nominee purposes, for the purpose of a foreigner owning land, and in some cases such structures have proven to be dissolved. Um, to the great detriment of the foreign national who was trying to uh, utilize the structure for certain enjoyment of, of Thai real estate. Not going to go any further into that specifically, but I'm, I am going to discuss this in the context of Thai condominiums. Um, yeah, it's, it's not infrequent that you actually see uh, holding companies set up to own Thai condominiums. And this can happen for various reasons. Uh, for example, there are certain uh, perhaps tax benefits that can be garnered by a, a foreign national, uh, especially, for example, like an American citizen, uh, rather than owning certain properties in their own name, may simply own, a, own a, an interest in a company, maintain control of a company, and then utilize the company to own uh, various real estate assets, specifically condominiums, which are not restricted from foreign national ownership in the Kingdom of Thailand pursuant to the Thai Condominium Act, so long as the structure in question comports with the act and all of the formalities are maintained when transmitting the title uh, into the foreign nationals or into the into the company's name or the foreign nationals name the reason i wanted to have this video to bring this up though is because people often have some misconceptions with respect to thai corporate entities and the most notable misconception is the fact that like they operate somewhat akin to say, a limited liability company in, in the United States. Um, limited liability companies in the United States, you form them, there are tax obligations, but as far as like maintenance of various books and things like this, um, except in some rather rare instances or a major going concern, one can have a limited liability company, especially one that may own, um, you know, may own land or may own a piece of property, whatever, um, or our own a piece of movable property like a car or a boat, etc. Um, and there are various reasons for having a structure set up that way or ownership set up that way. Um, the, with respect to that setup, yeah, there's not a lot of maintenance of the actual company itself. Here in Thailand, the rules with respect to maintenance of things like audited financial statements, semi-audited financial statements, monthly filings with respect to VAT if the company is VAT registered, withholding tax filings, uh, corporate income tax filings, um, etc. There, there, there are quite a substantial number of various administrative details that go sort of part and parcel with a Thai company. So I would urge anyone watching this video who's seriously interested in setting up a Thai company for the, for the use of owning, let's say specifically a condominium in Thailand, um, it would probably be a good idea to conduct further due diligence, uh, conduct further research, and really understand the ins and outs of how Thai corporations work uh, and, and the, the various expenses associated therewith on a regular basis before going ahead and getting oneself into something um, without knowing all the details as to how it's going to operate in the future.